Well, hi everyone. This is gonna be a much shorter update video on the Washington Bridge situation going on in Rhode Island. And I wanna point out that I have no personal or business interests in the state of Rhode Island. I've never even been to Rhode Island. But I've been involved working on projects as an engineer for almost 40 years. And I've focused almost exclusively on bridge projects in the last 25 years. So I've got contracts directly with DOTs. I work a lot with construction contractors for these bridges. So I've got a lot of experience related to bridges. And what I'm here to point out again, and as I've been continuously pointing out, is that the behavior of government officials in Rhode Island relative to this bridge topic is atypical. That is, they're not being very transparent. In fact, I think they've been misleading in some cases. Uh, there's been little to no discussion of accountability within Rhode Island government for what led up to the emergency closure of the westbound Washington Bridge. And most of the statements made publicly about the Washington Bridge have been made by uh, current Governor McKee or current RIDOT Director Peter Alviti. So this video, I'm going to pose five questions that... If I had a chance to ask these individuals directly, or if I was in a media pool there at a press conference, these are questions I would want to have answered. Or just uh, regular citizens, I think you have a right to demand answers to these questions. So let's, let's go through them. Question number one, what is the desired completion date for the westbound Washington Bridge, month and year? So the governor and Director Alviti absolutely refused to state any anticipated dates for when this bridge will be completed and reopened to traffic. And I don't think that's reasonable. Now they could certainly say, we want it open by X date, no matter what, or based on what we understand, and they can list what their understanding is, or their basis of their understanding, we would expect the bridge to be open by X date. Instead, they've got this uh, design build proposal process with two teams, Walsh and American Bridge, and they're leaving it up to them to determine cost, schedule, and the details associated with the planned construction for the replacement bridge. That's fine, but the DOT needs to be driving the train here. They need to set expectations. Otherwise, how are they going to even evaluate proposals? Let's say one team comes in at $400 million for a design build replacement, and they want to take six years to do it. And another team is proposing $500 million and they're gonna take four years to do it. Which proposal do you take? So again, it's incumbent on the state to line out these expectations in my opinion, and they should do so publicly. Contrast that with the Francis Scott Key Bridge. They're well underway with their design and they anticipate completion of the replacement bridge sometime in 2028, which I think at best is gonna be the completion date for the westbound Washington Bridge. But that's based on my own estimate. And again, government officials in Rhode Island refuse to even state what they think would be the completion date for the replacement bridge. And it's ironic because in my opinion, just from a traffic standpoint, the westbound Washington Bridge is far more important than the Francis Scott Key Bridge replacement. The Francis Scott Key Bridge was getting somewhere from 30 to 34,000 vehicles a day crossing it, whereas nearly 100,000 vehicles a day were crossing the Washington Bridge. Traffic is way down because of the congested nature of running two-way traffic on the existing eastbound bridge. My second question, what is the total estimated cost for the demolition of the existing westbound Washington Bridge and the design and construction of its replacement and how will RIDOT secure the required funding? So again, they're waiting for these contractors to come back with a proposal, but the state surely has engineers and cost estimators on staff, or they have consultants that can act in that capacity independent of these proposing contractors because they need to come up with that number to know how much money they need to ask uh, from the federal government and from state resources. I mean, how, how can you, let's say your, your car quits running and you have to buy a replacement. You know, how can you buy a replacement if you have no idea how much a new car is gonna cost? I mean, it makes no sense. My third question, has RIDOT performed or have they had performed on their behalf an engineering evaluation 
as to what caused the failure of the anchor bolts on the westbound Washington Bridge that led to its emergency closure in December 2023. If so, what were the results of such a study, and when does it appear that the anchor rods failed? So again, we're talking about these broken anchor rods. They look to be heavily corroded. Uh, initially, back in December 2023, Director Alviti said that there was some extraordinary event that caused these rods to break, and that the rods were intact in the most recent inspection prior to this discovery in July of 2023, uh, neither of which appears to be true whatsoever. But I think they owe it to the citizens of Rhode Island to explain how did this happen? And they could explain that and still not run afoul of disclosing information that would hurt them in a lawsuit. I mean, to the extent that Rhode Island DOT has such an evaluation report, and they should have that, if I think it's, it, it, any responsible DOT would want to understand how an important uh, critical component of a bridge broke leading to its closure. But let's say they have that report the defending uh, companies in this lawsuit will get a copy of that report through discovery. So why the public is being kept away from that information is something I simply don't understand. Question number four, when will a structural health monitoring system for the existing eastbound Washington Bridge, which is carrying six lanes of traffic now, become operational since the date of completion listed in the RIDOT purchase document listed a planned completion date of October 2024. And a related question is, will RIDOT post readings from this monitoring system on a live, publicly available dashboard? Well, they said they posted on a dashboard, but they haven't indicated whether they'd make that publicly available. And this system, what we're talking about, was summarized in the purchase request. And it says, description of critical request. This request is for a way in motion station and structural health instrumentation monitoring on the Washington Bridge number 200 eastbound. The system will monitor live traffic vehicle weights, monitor live bridge conditions and reactions, and integrate the data from both systems to determine the condition of and impacts to the bridge. The system will allow direct enforcement of overweight and speeding vehicles by state police. So is it a revenue generating scheme or is it an engineering evaluation system? Now the reason or justification for this purchase request is the eastbound Washington Bridge has become considerably more sensitive since the closing of the westbound bridge. So I'm not sure what exactly they mean by sensitive but that doesn't sound good to me. So the estimated cost or the purchase order cost for this system was 2.7 million dollars. The way in motion system was expected or should have been completed by July 31st, 2024. And the structural health monitoring system was supposed to be operational by October 31st, 2024. And all we know is that apparently the system is still not operational and uh, Director Alviti has not indicated when they expect it to, to be operational. My final question for today is what if any restructuring measures is RIDOT taking to improve the maintenance and repair programs of existing bridges and the project delivery process for new bridges? Now this question has been asked by local investigators uh, working for various media outlets and uh, Director Alviti refuses to answer this question because again, he cites reasons of the lawsuit and they just don't want to divulge what they're going to do. I, I don't see how they can get away with that. They can and should, I think, in at least broad strokes, outline what they're doing. Are they hiring more engineers to act as project managers? Are they going to have more project managers? Are they changing their contracts and scope for consultants when it comes to bridge inspections or design support? they could line out a series of actions that they're gonna take going forward. And I wouldn't see how it would compromise their ability to pursue this lawsuit. In fact, I've stated a number of videos, I think this lawsuit is, is largely bogus. I don't think in all likelihood that they're gonna find that these companies were negligent. Now, there could be contractual liability, that's a separate issue. You know, it's almost impossible to sign a contract with these DOTs that's even a two-way street. You know, usually there's a lot of language that's strongly in favor of the DOT and it's either take it or leave it if you're a consultant in terms of trying to get work. Uh, I avoid contracts like that. I don't, I don't have to do those kind of jobs. But, uh, you know, whether those contract terms are enforceable or not, I guess the court will decide 
sort of like the waiver you sign at your gym saying that they're not responsible for any personal injury. Well, most people think that's, you know, you injure yourself because you lifted wrong or something. Uh, they wouldn't expect it to cover a roof coming down on you while you were doing bench press. So again, I don't think that agreement would be enforceable in that scenario. I'm, I'm not giving you the legal perspective. I'm giving you the business perspective as a business owner. So I think this lawsuit has been a great disservice to the people of Rhode Island. I think it's a political smokescreen. And they've been using this lawsuit as an excuse to avoid any accountability in terms of what they're doing as a DOT uh, going forward in my opinion. So I've got these links in the description. If you want to ask any of these questions or any variation of these questions to Director Alviti, that's his email address. And the public affairs officer for Rhode Island DOT is Charles St. Martin. I've sent him several emails and I have yet to get a response. So I'm not sure what's up with that. You might have better luck than me, perhaps. With that, I'd like to thank those of you who have donated to buy me a coffee. I've got a link in the description. That's a great way to support the channel if you're so inclined. I also want to thank those of you who are channel members and those of you who provided super thanks. Those are also great ways to support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. Please stay tuned for future videos. I've got a lot of interesting topics coming up. I've got several public information requests pending with the state of Rhode Island, Rhode Island DOT. So I look to have several more updates on this ongoing bridge saga in the coming weeks and months. Thanks very much, everyone.